Welcome to another edition of the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. I'm Tim McMaster, and stepping into the cage today, Mike Pelfrey, starting pitcher for the Minnesota Twins. We're off to such a great season th through half the season so far. Mike, first of all, thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. All right, you know how it works. If you want to get your questions in via Twitter, use that hashtag chatting cage or press that red button at the bottom of your screen. You can get in line and ask your own questions of Mike Pelfrey. And Mike, we're going to start on Twitter. And Darplight wants to know, what was it like, what has it been like to have a winning team in Minnesota this year? Uh, well, it's been fun. Um, you know, I think the biggest, uh, you know, difference is, is probably the atmosphere in the clubhouse and, uh, you know, I think we every day we show up to the park, we expect to win. And, uh, you know, I can't say it's been like that, to, uh, you know, the previous years. And, and uh, you know, I think Molitor and Neil Allen and Eddie Gordado and, uh, you know, Torrey Hunter has been, uh, you know, great in changing, uh, changing everything around the atmosphere and all that. That sends us into a perfect transition to another Twitter question here, Mike. And Dispig99 wants to know, what's it like to have Torrey Hunter as a teammate in that clubhouse? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, he brings everybody up and, uh, you know, brings everybody, keeps everybody loose. And, uh, you know, obviously I think, uh, you know, people have talked about the post-game dance parties that we have after wins. But I think it's gotten to a point, too, at home that if we don't win, I think everybody comes in there disappointed, even though uh, I don't think uh, the scenery is probably that great, uh, you know, when we do win watching these guys dance. But, uh, you know, guys are disappointed that, uh, you know, we don't win. And, uh, like I said, he keeps it loose. He comes in the dugout and talks about uh, he hits a homer and talks about you got to be a grown man or, or have kids in college hit balls like that. And, uh, you know, he's always saying something and, uh, you know, keeping it loose, which, uh, you know, makes it fun for us. All right, Mike, we're going to stay on Twitter now. And Jose, can you see, wants to know how fast is Byron Buxton? Well, he's, uh, you know, I think, you know, when I first, you know, came up, I think the guy that, uh, you know, I always saw was uh, Jose Reyes, who could, you know, absolutely fly. And, and I actually think that uh, Buxton is, is faster than him. So uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty impressive to watch. And uh, he hustles, too, and, and gets after it. And, uh, you know, obviously speed's a you know, huge part of his game, and uh, he's not scared to show it. And uh, I think for us, you know, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's fun to watch every day, and I think we get, uh, you know, get pretty spoiled. This is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Press that red button. You can get in line and ask your questions of Mike Pelfrey. And I think we have a fan on the line right now. If you can just say your name, tell us where you're from, and go ahead with your question for Mike Pelfrey. Hey, Mike. I'm Doug. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. And my question for you is where is your favorite place to go when you're on the road? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I grew up uh... – you know, I think I grew up like a Cardinals fan, uh, you know, Wrigley. Uh, so those are kind of the other, uh, you know, two stadiums that, uh, uh, you know, I enjoy going. And, uh, you know, another place I enjoy kind of going is, is Kansas City just for the fact that uh, it's somewhat uh, close to home and uh, my family always makes those trips. So those are kind of, uh, you know, the three spots. All right, Mike, we're going to go back to Twitter now. And Rome's B wants to know, you talked about some visiting parks. Rome's B wants to know, what's your favorite thing about Target Field? I think my favorite thing about Target Field is that, uh, you know, I think the hitter has to hit it twice to get it out of there. Uh, <laughs> and obviously it's a it's a pitcher's ballpark, and, uh, you know, I think it plays pretty big. Uh, you know, I think especially early, you know, when the weather's a little colder. But uh, it's obviously a, a very nice ballpark, and, and, you know, the amenities for us inside the clubhouse are, uh, uh, you know, second to none. So uh, it's a great place to be. Amazing thing, I think, is you mentioned how hard it is to hit the ball out of that ballpark. How does Brian Dozier do it so much? I don't know. I, he gets in little, uh, you know, short arms, you know, through that zone. And uh, I don't know, a little, little Popeye strength or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But uh, he's got pretty good, uh, you know, bat speed there. And uh, he's obviously, uh, he's not scared to hit him. So uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty fun to watch and, uh, you know, watch the power that uh, he, gen he generates. All right, Mike, we're going to go back to Twitter now. And I know you, you grew up in Wichita. You went to Wichita State. And obviously, their basketball program has been tremendous the last few years. And T.T. Silver wants to know, what did you think of the prank your teammates pulled on you during March Madness a couple of years ago? <laughs> well, that was a pretty good, uh, that was a pretty good prank. Uh, you know, I think Gardy, uh, he married a woman from Wichita, and uh, I know he said he lived there at one point, so I didn't really uh, expect anything crazy, you know, when he called me in to speak to them and how Wichita State called him. You know, I know, I know he has ties to Wichita, so I thought, oh, okay, no big deal. 
uh, and obviously uh, I had no idea what was going on, and uh, you know they got me. So uh, I took it with, with uh, took it as a lot of fun, and I thought it was pretty good. And uh, I got to find a way to get them back. So uh, especially uh, you know Perkins, but uh, I'll figure something out. For anybody who hasn't seen that video, basically they they had Mike give a give a pump up speech to the Wichita basketball team, but. But it wasn't the Wichita State basketball team. It was the rest of the Twins clubhouse. That video is available on MLB.com if you want to check it out. All right, Mike, it's now time for our EDJ question of the day. And the question today is, how many times do you lick your fingers during a start and do you keep track? <laughs> you know, I definitely, uh, you know, don't keep track. I know, uh, you know, when I was in New York with the Mets, guys made a, uh, a lot of fans made a big deal about it and some people counted and, 80-something times. I think it probably uh, just depends on the amount of pitch that I throw. But uh, I might I might go there every time or, you know, try to get some kind of sweat off my forehead. But it uh, just feels like I have a better chance to get a, get, get a grip, uh, whether it's my tongue or, or sweat off my arm or my head or whatever, uh, you know, from the baseball. But uh, I would, if I had to guess, I'd say on average maybe 56 times, which is probably uh, a lot, maybe kind of disgusting to some people. But... Those balls are clean, I think, that we're throwing, that we're touching, too. So, I'm impressed that you got it down to 56, not 55, not not 60. Maybe a target field, they can get a little counter going in the corner. They do the pitch count. They could do the uh, finger-looking count. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. All right, we're going to uh, get another fan on the line here, Mike. This is the Edward Jones chatting cage. Mike Pelfrey taking some cuts. And here's the fan. If you can just tell us your name, where you're from, go ahead with your question for Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, I'm Joe. I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. And my question is, what's some of your favorite memories playing at Wichita State in college? Uh, you know, I think, I think uh, you know, with all things, I think it's probably, uh, you know, the relationships that you build. Uh, you know, when you're playing. And, uh, you know, obviously I enjoyed uh, going to Wichita State and winning, but, uh, you know, I still talk to the pitching coach, uh, the head coach is, uh, you know, my neighbor a couple doors down, uh, and then my college roommates, uh, you know, who I still stay in contact with, uh, are probably some of my, you know, better memories. And, and uh, you know, on the field, that has uh, been so much baseball, it kind of, you know, all runs together a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think we won a lot of games there, and, uh, you know, and uh, it was fun. All right, Mike, we're going to go back to Twitter now. CFR1980 wants to know, who's been the toughest batter for you to face during your career? You know, I, I, somebody asked me this in, uh, you know, spring training um, at Twins Fest right before spring training. And, uh, you know, I told him Chipper Jones was the hardest guy. And uh, I had sitting guys sitting down there, uh, you know, sitting across from me. Brian Dozier started laughing. And I said, what's so funny? And he made the comment that uh, – I met Chipper this off season hunting, you know, and uh, he told me he knew every pitch that was coming. And uh, <laughs> I kind of laughed. I said, hey, it, you know, it seemed like that, you know. Uh, so he had a little, uh, maybe I was tipping or something. He had a little read on me, but uh, I couldn't seem to get uh, Chipper Jones out. And I guess there was a good reason why. That's funny. Uh, as a Met pitcher in general, Chipper had had so much success in New York. So I don't think it was necessarily your fault either, Mike. He he loved hitting off whoever was pitching against the Mets for some reason. It seemed. Yeah, I think you're uh, you're probably pretty successful when uh, I think you name your kid after the ballpark there. <laughs> I think he named his kid Shea or something. So, uh, you probably didn't get him out too many times. Yeah, indeed. All right, we're gonna go back to Twitter here, and Jack Jack O Five wants to know: Can you compare Miguel Sano's power to another guy that maybe you've played with? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily, um, know if I can, uh, the guy has a lot of, a lot of power. Uh, he's obviously a pretty, uh, a pretty strong, strong kid. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know guys that, that I've played with. Uh, you know, we, I think we call him, uh, we call him Miggy. Uh, so he kind of has that Miguel, uh, Miguel Cabrera, I think power, but, uh, not as much, you know, the other way because Miguel could take the ball out anywhere. But uh, he's a big old strong kid, and, and uh, you know, when he lets it fly, I mean, the ball flies off his bat. But uh, I think a lot of good, uh, a lot of great things that come from him, and uh, I think he's just going to keep getting better and better, the, you know, the more comfortable he gets because he's up there and he's not scared of anything, and uh, he's pretty, imp pretty impressive to watch. Yeah, he certainly is. All right, back to Twitter we go here, Mike, and OMG I can 
wants to know, do you play any other sports when you were growing up? Uh, basketball was my, uh, my other sport. Uh, I wrestled, I wrestled a little bit, but, uh, basketball was my, uh, other thing. And, uh, hopefully the owners of the twins are going to listen to this, but, uh, I play basketball in the off season. Uh, I know it's against my contract, but, uh, I enjoy going out there and, and playing and competing and, uh, it's a good way to keep me in shape. Uh, but, uh, basketball is the other thing. And, uh, it's another one of my, uh, my loves in life. We won't tell anyone, Mike. <laughs> I think uh, Cal Ripken was famous for that as well. So there's certainly other guys who have played basketball in the off season. All right, that is going to do it, Mike. We appreciate it taking the time, stepping into the cage, and taking some cuts. Thanks a lot. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. That's going to do it for another Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Tune in again next time.